Hello friends and welcome to Storytime. My name is Miss Maureen and today we are going to be reading some books about harvest. But first let's sing our hello song. When we sing hello we will salute and when we sing friends we'll take our two fingers and have them give each other a hug. Hello friends, hello friends, hello friends, it's time to say hello. Good job. So today we are talking about harvest. Can you say the letters in the word harvest with me? Let's start at the beginning. H A R V E S T Good job. Harvest. 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 Good job. A harvest is the process or the period of time where people gather crops. And fall is a very important time for harvesting before the really cold months of the winter. So right now, a lot of big farms and little farms and people just growing things in their backyards, they're harvesting. Let's learn to say harvest using American Sign Language. Do you remember what letter harvest starts with? H harvest. Yes, it starts with the letter H. H is for harvest. H. To sign the word harvest, you will take your non-dominant hand, the one you do not eat with or do not write with, and take your dominant hand, kind of pretend you're cutting down stalks of wheat or a vegetable or something, and then gather it up. Harvest. Harvest. Good job. What are some of the things that we harvest? Maybe you have a garden at home and you harvest tomatoes, maybe peas, maybe cucumbers. In Maine, we harvest a lot of potatoes. Harvesting is really important to keep us fed. Some people grow their own food. Some people grow food that they can sell to the grocery stores so that we have something to buy and eat when we go shopping. Let's learn how to sign the word food. What letter does food start with? F food. That's right. It starts with the letter F. F is for food. F. Can we sign the word food? For food, take your hand like this and just food, food. Good job. So now when you talk about your garden at home or when you talk about the big farms that you see, you can talk about how they harvest the food there. Before we go into our first book, why don't we sing our alphabet together? You can pat along at home, you can sing with me, you can just listen if you'd like, or you can try to follow along with the signs. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time won't you sing with me? Good job, friends. When we think of harvesting, oftentimes we think about harvesting plants. But there are other ways of harvesting as well. For example, harvesting honey from bees. This book is called The Bee Man by 
Lori Krebs, and it's a story of the bee man, who is a man who raises bees. He takes care of them, he makes sure they're healthy, they're happy, and then he harvests honey from them. The bee man. The bee man. Here is my grandpa, who's known in our town as the Bee Man. Here is his jacket with a zippered up hood that covers his face just the way that it should when he visits his hives as the Bee Man. Here are his gloves made of cotton and leather, protecting his hands in all kinds of weather when he tends to his hives as the bee man. Here is the beehive where all the bees sleep, tucked into a box called a shallow or deep, and then placed on a bench by the bee man. Here is the smoker that quiets the bees, and a hive tool that opens the beehive with ease for a much closer look by the bee man. Here is the queen bee who does her job well and lays tiny eggs in a six-sided cell. She's the heart of the hive, says the bee man. Here is a drone bee with big bulging eyes and a large appetite supporting his size. He mates with the queen, adds the bee man. Here are the workers, 10,000 or more, who gather the nectar to bring back and store in honeycomb cells for the bee man. Here are the house bees with swift moving wings that dry up the nectar a worker bee brings, making honey for me and the bee man. Here is the extractor. It's clickety clack, removing the honey from frames on its rack and filling up jars for the bee man. Here's some of the honey returned to the hive. It's food for the bees to help them survive. The long winter days near the bee man. Here are the bees protected from harm. Inside the hive, huddled cozy and warm. So they'll be here next year, says the bee man. Here is the wagon, filled up to the brim, with bottles of honey collected by him and brought to the house by the bee man. Here are the muffins, all warm and delicious, and dripping with honey on grandma's best dishes. Yum. I'm glad that my grandpa's the bee man. The end. We have a beehive here in the library. And our very special honey bee who goes around and he collects pollen from all the pretty flowers and he brings it back to his beehive so that he and the other bees can make honey but we need to find the pollen and our little honeybee needs your help. So let's help him find some pollen over here on these flowers. Hmm. Let's start with this flower. What color is this flower? Hmm. It 
is a white flower. So, I need you and our little honeybee friend. We're going to say, white flower, white flower, do you have pollen for me? Can we say that? White flower, white flower, do you have pollen for me? And now we'll say, white flower, white flower, let me see. Ready? White flower, white flower, let me see. Oh, look, the white flower had some pollen. So we'll give that to our special little honeybee. And we'll put it in the hive. Let's check out another flower. Why don't we look at this one? What color is this flower? Hmm. It's a pink flower. Can we say our rhyme to the pink flower? Pink flower, pink flower, do you have any pollen for me? Pink flower, pink flower, let me see. Look at that. The pink flower had some pollen too. We'll give that to our special honeybee and he'll bzzz over to the hive and drop off that pollen. Oh, we're collecting a lot. Let's see if we can get some more. Let's check this flower. What color is this flower? Hmm. It's a yellow flower. Can we say our rhyme to the yellow flower? Yellow flower, yellow flower, do you have any pollen for me? Yellow flower, yellow flower, let me see. <gasps> Look, the yellow flower had some pollen too. We'll give that to our special little honeybee friend and he'll bzzz, bring it right over to our beehive. Should we check some more flowers? What do you think? Mm -hmm. I think so too. Let's check this flower. What color is this flower? Hmm. It's a purple flower. Can we say our rhyme to the purple flower? Purple flower, purple flower, do you have any pollen for me? Purple flower, purple flower, let me see. The purple flower did have pollen. We'll give it to our special honeybee friend and he'll buzz it right over to the hive. Good job. Well, we just have one more flower to check, so let's check it. What color is our last flower? Hmm, what color is this flower? Hmm, it's an orange flower. Let's say our rhyme to the orange flower. Orange flower, orange flower, do you have any pollen for me? Orange flower, orange flower, let me see. Oh, the orange flower did have some pollen. So we'll give that to our little honeybee friend and bring it back over to the beehive. Good job. So all the bees, to work on that pollen and they're going to turn it into honey. Look at that big honeycomb. Mm -mm -mm. Delicious. Good work everyone. You helped the bees so much. I have a song about bumblebees for us to sing together. I'm going to use
a shaker egg while I sing this song. You don't need one, but if you have some at home, go ahead and grab it. Maybe you have a maraca at home or a little tambourine, maybe even just a couple sticks you can tap together. If you don't have a shaker at home, but you'd like to make one, you can use an empty plastic bottle and fill it up with beads or rice, dried beans, and then put the cap back on and you can shake that. And that will be like a little shaker egg. When I sing this song, we're going to talk about different parts of the body. So if you have a shaker, when we sing about a certain part of the body, put your shaker on that part of your body. And if you don't have a shaker, you can just pretend your hand is a little bee. Bumblebee, bumblebee, landing on my nose. Bumblebee, bumblebee, now he's on my toes. On my arm, on my leg, on my elbows. Bumblebee, bumblebee, he lands and then he goes. Good job! Let's sing it one more time now that you know the words. Bumblebee, bumblebee, landing on my nose. Bumblebee, bumblebee, now he's on my toes. On my arms, on my legs, on my elbows. Bumblebee, bumblebee, he lands and then he goes. Good job! Our next book is called The Turnip by Jan Brett, and it's a story about working together to harvest because the turnip in the story is so big that it takes a lot of help to get it harvested. The turnip. The turnip. A really fun thing about Jan Brett's books is paying attention to what's going on in the sides here. They tell their own little story or sometimes give us clues as to what's gonna happen next in the story. Badger Girl was weeding the vegetable patch when she saw something strange growing in the garden. It was the biggest turnip she'd ever seen. Turnip soup, turnip pie, Badger Girl said. How delicious. One autumn morning, the air turned chilly. It was time to pick the vegetables and pull the giant turnip up. But when Badger Girl got to the giant turnip, she could not pull it up. Let me help, Badger Boy offered. Hang on to me and my strong arms will pull it right out. They tugged and tugged, but the turnip stayed in place. Children, Mother Badger called. I can wrench that turnip out with a twist and a snap. Watch and learn. But the turnip remained firmly rooted. Father Badger ambled over. You'll see how easy it is when I take over, he chortled. Nothing happened. A snowflake fell from the sky, then another, then another. Once the earth froze, they wouldn't get the turnip out until spring. Hedgie was fond of roast turnip. I know what to do, he said. I'll stick my prickles into the turnip. We'll all hold hands and give it the heave ho but the turnip didn't heave or hoe. Mr. Ram, on his way back to town, 
smiled smugly. You country bumpkins don't have the right equipment. I'll hook it with my horns. Pull, pull, pull. The turnip didn't budge. Vanya, the horse, stopped by. I am mighty strong, he whinnied. Hitch my harness to that tasty turnip. And we'll be eating it mashed and salted before it gets dark. The harness jangled, but when all was settled, the giant turnip was still in the ground. A cocky little rooster had been watching all along. He had just had a close call with a cooking pot and was looking for a new place to live. Rooster strutted over. Make room, he crowed. He took the turnip top in his beak and pulled. Hmm. Looks like some bears just got home. Down in their winter den, the bears found the giant turnip in their bed. they shouted. The turnip flew out of the ground with rooster riding high. Whew. Time for turnip pancakes browned in butter for all, Mother Badger sang out, waving her frying pan. Badger Girl put out their best yellow chair for Rooster. Soon, the sizzling, crispy turnip pancakes were ready. Mmm. Rooster, you are invited to stay with us as long as you wish, Father Badger announced. After all, when would we ever meet such a useful fellow again? The end. I have a quick song for us to sing. It's called The Farmer Plants the Seeds. And we're going to act out the motions while we sing. So let's start by planting our seeds. You can do this standing, or you can do it sitting like I am. I'm going to plant the seeds right here on my lap. The farmer plants the seeds, the farmer plants the seeds. Hi ho the dairy o oh, the farmer plants the seeds. The sun begins to shine, the sun begins to shine. Hi ho the dairy o oh, the sun begins to shine. The rain begins to fall, the rain begins to fall. Hi ho the dairy o oh, the rain begins to fall. The plants begin to grow, the plants begin to grow. Hi ho the dairy o oh, the plants begin to grow. The vegetables are here, the vegetables are here. Hi ho the dairy o oh, the vegetables are here. The farmer digs them up, the farmer digs them up. Hi ho the dairy o oh, the farmer digs them up. Now it's time to eat. Now it's time to eat. Hi ho the dairy o. Oh, now it's time to eat. I have another song about growing a garden. For this one, I'm going to stand up, but you can stay seated if you want to. For this next song, I'm going to use a couple different props. So you can try to find some props to use as well if you'd like, or you can use your imagination and just act out the motions by pretending that you have the items with you. The props I'm going to use are, I have a scarf. This is going to be my garden plot. I have a paint stir. This will be my shovel. I have a little mini golf club. This will be my hoe for tilling up the soil, getting it ready to plant seeds in. I have some felt that I'm going to use for my beans and my seeds. 
and I have a little bucket to collect my beans in at the end. So if you want to grab some props, you can, or you can just act it out. So I'm gonna put my garden plot down on the ground. And this is a song by Raffi. It's called In My Garden. All right, we'll start with our shovel and then we'll do our hoe. We'll plant our seeds. We'll grow. You can stretch up for that one. We'll pick and we'll eat. Digging, digging, this is how we dig the ground in our garden, in our garden. Digging, digging, this is how we dig the ground early in the morning. We're gonna hoe. Hoeing, hoeing, this is how we hoe the weeds in our garden, in our garden. Hoeing, hoeing, this is how we hoe the weeds early in the morning. Ready? We have to plant our seeds. Planting, planting, this is how we plant our seeds in our garden, in our garden. Planting, planting, this is how we plant our seeds early in the morning. Ready to grow? Growing, growing, this is how our peas will grow in our garden, in our garden. Growing, growing, this is how our peas will grow early in the morning. You ready to pick our peas? Get your buckets. Picking, picking, this is how we'll pick our peas in our garden, in our garden. Picking, picking, this is how we'll pick our peas early in the morning. Now the best part, we get to eat them. Eating, eating, this is how we'll eat our peas in our garden, in our garden. Eating, eating, this is how we'll eat our peas early in the morning. Mmm, delicious. Our next book is called Too Many Tomatoes. It's a fun rhyming book about a garden that grew too many tomatoes. So the boy and his grandparents have to find a way to share the tomatoes with everybody, which isn't a bad thing. Too Many Tomatoes by Eric Ode. Too Many Tomatoes. Grandfather's garden is popping with peas. It's buzzing with blossoms and bumbly bees. It's bursting with berries and beans and potatoes and tall twining vines of too many tomatoes. Whoa, look at all those tomatoes. Too many tomatoes, too many to see. Too many for grandpa and grandma and me. A plateful, a crateful, a grateful hooray. This town has too many tomatoes today. Grandpa began with a handful of seeds and sun, soil and water as every seed needs. One sprout and another, a shout of surprise. Too many tomatoes climb up to the skies. Bursting from barrels and buckets and pails, over the rooftop, over the rails. A holler, a dollar, a nickel, a penny. Sing me a song of tomatoes too many. Down to the sidewalk and down to the street. Drippy and slippery, juicy and sweet. Red ones and yellow ones, shiny and round. Jumbling, tumbling over the ground.
tomatoes on trains, tomatoes on tracks, tomatoes on tow trucks with cars on their backs, tomatoes that topple from towering vines, crawling and sprawling in curling designs. Too many tomatoes, too many to find, too many above, too many behind. A biscuit to butter, a basket to borrow, sing me a song of tomatoes tomorrow. One for the teacher and one for the tailor, one for the scientist, one for the sailor. One for the painter and one for the plumber, one for the dancer and one for the drummer. One for the man at the magazine stand, one for the girl with the book in her hand. One for the boy sleeping under the tree, one for my neighbor, and one just for me. Mm. Too many tomatoes, too many to trade. Make way for a downtown tomato parade. A riddle to fiddle, a tickle to say. Hooray for too many tomatoes today. The end. I have one more song for us before we sing our goodbye song. This one is not about harvest. Um, it's just about fall, but it's one that we'll be singing for the next couple story times. So we'll introduce it today and then we'll do it again next week. It's called Autumn Leaves. We'll pretend our hands are leaves here. Autumn leaves are in the trees, in the trees, in the trees. Autumn leaves are in the trees all over town. Autumn leaves are falling down, falling down falling down autumn leaves are falling down all over town autumn leaves are whirling around whirling around whirling around autumn leaves are whirling around all over town everybody rake them up rake them up rake them up everybody rake them up all over town. Ready to jump? Jump into the piles we made, piles we made, piles we made. Jump into the piles we made all over town. Well, that's it for story time today, friends. I hope that you had a fun time reading about harvest and singing songs about harvest. We will be back next week with more fall story times. Um, you can view the whole schedule on our Facebook or on our website. Those will be linked in the description. You can like us there, follow us on Instagram. You'll be up to date on all the changes that are happening all the time. If you have any questions for me, you can email me at my email address, which is listed below. Why don't we go ahead and sing our goodbye song? And as always, after that, I will have an activity for you to do if you'd like to stick around and do an activity with me. When we sing goodbye, we're going to wave and we're going to clap. We wave goodbye like this. We wave goodbye like this. We clap our hands for all our friends and wave goodbye like this. Goodbye, friends. So for today's craft, we'll need a paper plate, some painting supplies, and yellow, green, and orange paint, as well as scissors and a stapler. So let's start off by painting. We're going to paint the inner circle of the plate yellow 
and the outer edge green. Once your center's dry, you'll want to add orange to the center with little dots or smudges. You can use your paintbrush here or you can use your finger if you want to. So once the paint is dry, you're going to cut from the top of the plate around the yellow. but not all the way around. When you get to the bottom, you're gonna cut up through the yellow so it becomes kind of the shape of a corn, and then back around the other green side. So you want it to look like this. For this last part, you'll just take the two little green leaves and bend them down sort of like a little bow and staple them together. There's your corn.